Okay, so understanding in time by Kurt Newman. So today I'm going to be talking about the relationship between relationship and the time you have to develop that relationship. And the relationships in my novel, which I studied for my four-year project, uh, Atonement by this man, Yumi Kuhn, right here. So we're going to take a look at some of the common relationships that we have in our lives every day. Now we may not have all of them that I'm going to describe here, but odds are we at least have one of these uh, peculiarities. Or so some of the common ones, um, childhood friendships, that we, we start as children, we become close with um, a few friends, uh, there's some time and separation where we don't see them, and then perhaps we reunite with them later in this, this sort of arc, awkward stage that we uh, undergo. So that, I'm going to talk about that today. And then also a younger sister to an older sister, how you may feel towards that sibling, so you can generalize it to how you feel towards your older sibling, or how the older sibling feels towards you. And then lastly, a parent, which a mother is depicted here, you can consider it also a father in a more general sense, um, a parent and her relationship or his relationship to his or her children. So those are the relationships I'm going to talk about today. And the idea that I came behind uh, this can talk was that what McEwen was trying to do in his atonement was really push forth these human relationships, which Mr. Kanner talked about earlier in the year, whenever you take away all the splendor and all the, the wonderful words that an author puts in there, what you see is the human rela relationships that exist between the characters and what he is trying to tell us. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, what McEwen was trying to tell us about the relationships that we have with each other and with these uh, specific types of people. Okay, so the first relationship I'm, I'm going to talk about is childhood friends. So in Atonement, the uh, two of the main characters, two, uh, two of the three main characters, which I'll mention now, one being Cecilia Tallis and Robbie Tallis, or Robbie, excuse me, Turner. Robbie Turner is a gardener for the Tallis family, and they are childhood friends. They used to be friends when they were a lot younger, because he would spend a lot of time near the Tallis house, but then separated, uh, went to college at different places, uh, and then now they're out of college and they see each other. This sort of, this sort of awkward stage uh, that they, they live in as a previously childhood friends. <clears throat> and so part of the novel is that they, uh, Cecilia is walking to a, a fountain and she has a face with her and the two of them talk. And, and, and Cecilia gets this feeling of everything that Robbie does is designed to distance Cecilia. And so it just enhances this, this awkward sense that exists between uh, these two old childhood friends. You know, you'd expect, <coughs> as many of us would, that they have a very strong foundation as they formed it in the childhood. Like, psychologically, they'd be, they'd be very attuned. But the, the time separation that they had created this sort of distance between them, and it only seems that they're only going in separate ways. OK, well, what happens is uh, they get in a bit of an argument. They break the vase that Cecilia had. And then Cecilia ends up taking off part of her clothes, goes in the fountain, takes them off. And a character who I will talk about in a minute, Bryony, sees this whole event of her, and she misinterprets that. But we'll get to that in a second. So <clears throat> Robbie suddenly has this ignited flame that he's been holding back in his uh, mind for Cecilia. So now he feels sexually attracted to her. And he inadvertently sends her, through a, a mishap event, sends her a, a, a very sexual letter, uh, which he did not mean to send her. And so he confronts her about it that night when they have a at dinner party at the Talis house. And uh, Robbie confronts her about it. They go into the library together to talk about it. And all of a sudden, Cecilia also realizes that she feels these same feelings that Robbie utters in the letter towards her. So there's reciprocal feelings that they finally discover, which they hadn't realized were there all along, these childhood friends. Okay. So they end up uh, having sex in the library. And this is a, a quote. They felt watched by their bemused childhood selves. Um, so it, it's interesting that while they're standing in the library, they actually felt the childhood friendship that they had towards each other was looking upon them. And they couldn't, it was difficult for them, and one of the reasons that it took so long for this relationship to develop was because they kept holding on to that childhood friendship rather than kind of maturing and moving past that. They continually held on to that idea of how their friendship was supposed to be. And so here's a really good quote I like. Um, well, after they have sex or while they're doing it, this is what um, McEwen writes. At last they were strangers, their past were forgotten, they were also strangers to themselves who had forgotten who or where they were. So, like I said, what was holding them back the entire time was the fact that they did know each other, and that, that, um, that relationship that they had formed was holding them back from the strangeness which they finally found, that they could only become what they really were supposed to become by becoming strangers and separate. 
Okay, so that's the first relationship that I wanted to talk about. The second one was sister to sister, the relationship between Bryony Tallis and her sister, who I talked about uh, before, Cecilia Tallis. Okay, so Bryony, like I mentioned, had uh, seen this letter that Robbie, the sexual letter that Robbie sent to Cecilia in an inadvertent mishap. And so she sees it, and she interprets this man now as a maniac. She gets the idea that Robbie, she misinterprets from, uh, from the letter that Robbie is this sort of maniac character. She gets the idea from her cousin Lola, who is also staying at the house. And so what happens is that really Briny, the younger sister, just like all of our younger sisters, your younger, younger siblings attempt to do, is they attempt to protect the older sister um, that you have, the older, older brother, because it, you, you feel that they have looked after you for some time, now you can look after them. She's given the opportunity, I can look after this person, I can look after Cecilia and uh, attempt to save her from this maniac. The problem is that she has this sort of misunderstanding, obviously, of what their relationship is. I mean, uh, Cecilia and Robbie couldn't even figure out what their relationship actually was, but Bryony thinks she hasn't figured out that he's some maniac uh, going sexually crazy over, <clears throat> over um, Cecilia. So that night, two of the cousins uh, that were staying at the house run away, these little boys, and they sent out, go out in search parties to find them. Lola, the cousin I mentioned earlier, that gave Bryony the idea of a maniac. Lola is sexually, sexually assaulted during this period, and Bryony says that she saw who sexually assaulted um, Lola, the, the cousin, but she didn't actually. She just made herself think that it was the same maniac character who she had uh, put into her mind. So it's another a bit of misunderstanding that she thinks that if I, if I say it's Robbie, this sexually crazy person who's heading towards Cecilia, that I can, if, that I can save her from this maniac. And that's, what, that's the impression that she feels under. So this is kind of the idea of the protection. Um, when Robbie's walking back, did he believe he could conceal his crime behind an apparent kindness behind this show of being the good shepherd? Because Robbie is able to bring back, he finds the two lost children who ran out into the darkness. But uh, Briny does not feel um, any compassion towards his, his, uh, his find of these two lost children because she is entirely skeptical and misunderstanding of the entire situation and sees that, and sees, interprets this entire situation now that Robbie's trying to make up for his... Uh, his craziness by bringing back the two children to, to conceal his true uh, identity. So the idea behind this one is protection. The idea behind the, uh, what I talked about earlier, what was it? The first relationship of the childhood friends was a misunderstanding between the relationship and having to discover what's actually uh, concealed. Uh, the last one I wanted to talk about was the parent to child. <clears throat> so this is going to be Emily Tallis to her children of Bryony and Cecilia. <clears throat> now. Illness had stopped her giving her children all a mother should. Sensing this, they had always called her by her first name. So her children had always talked to their mother with the name Emily. They always said, Emily, come do this, Emily, come do that. Because Miss um, Tallis didn't really take up the role of a mother. She had migraines, she suffered from migraines, but she also wasn't a very empowered woman. Um, I don't know if during the 1940s uh, it wasn't typical. Typically it was probably probably the man of the household that did take that powerful role of um, <clears throat> taking care of the children, also the mother. But um, at this point in time, the father, uh, Mr. Tallis, uh, was fairly separated from the family, always working with the war department, so he wasn't really around. So it was supposed to be her responsibility to take care of the children. But what ended up happening was that one of the daughters, the older daughter, daughter Cecilia, was the one that really had to control the family. She was the one that had to bring everyone in and uh, make the family uh, go accordingly, as it was supposed to, to make it run efficiently. And so this is another bit of misunderstanding, as I interpreted it, is that they misunderstand their roles. You know, she wasn't willing to step up. Emily wasn't able, willing to step up and, and go beyond her, her illness and, and go beyond uh, whatever predispositions she had to really teach the children, whereas Cecilia had to step up, and the family kind of gets disjointed. I mean, obviously, there's a disconnect between the... The, the two daughters and the mother, the father away, and then Cecilia and Bryony. There's obviously a disconnect within the entire family. And that misunderstanding between all the characters really can relate back to our lives. Okay, so I'm going to talk about all of them really briefly. So we always encounter, or a lot of us encounter, the childhood friends and the misunderstanding that exists between that and the overbearing sister and a, a disjointed family that, that can't take care of their children, where their children have to take care of themselves. And I believe what Ian McEwen has done with atonement is really augment these circumstances. He's made it very obvious to us, whereas it, the, the novel, the plot itself, maybe not uh, be as obvious um, 
or not as a close to reality as may happen. This is, this is a very rare set of circumstances, how it happens. But McEwen did it so he makes it obvious to us what we're supposed to look at, that we're supposed to look at these relationships and say that there's not time in our lives for misunderstanding. There's not time for us to misunderstand our, our position, where we are in the relationship, and the other person in the relationship. Because what happens in this novel, it's a, very, it's a novel that really does um, hinge itself on time, because you start in the 1939, right before World War I, and then you end the novel go, going towards the end, um, after World War I, and then uh, post, uh, you go all the way to 1970s, 1980s, when Brian is about seven years old, or probably in year 2000. So <clears throat> the idea is that by that time, I won't spoil the ending for those of you who haven't read the book, but uh, the idea is that um, by the end of the book, you realize that some of them lost their chance to really develop these relationships, that Bryony, that excuse me, that Robbie and Cecilia, if they had spent the time to really understand what it was between them, then they would have had more time together. That if, if the children had really and the mother had really tried to work together to understand their relationship, then they would have the time together to, to form a, a closely knit family. Thank you.